Hello and welcome to our reaction to Beverly Hills Cop. Another Eddie Murphy film. You know, the last Eddie Murphy film that we reacted to on the channel was Trading Places, and we took a like a six month break after that. So <laughs> that's not gonna happen this time. Don't worry. But that was a really good film. It was. You know, Eddie Murphy brings a strong presence when he's on screen. And honestly, to tell you the truth, last night I witnessed one of the worst uh, defeats in Cowboys history. I'm a big Cowboys fan. Um, so I could use a good laugh right now, to say the least. Instead of the tears. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoy our reaction, don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up, as the kids say, <laughs> and subscribe to our channel for more reactions. And now for our feature. Ooh. I'm already feeling these vibes. Ooh. Okay, we do need to turn the volume down. <laughs> Detroit, okay. The heat is on. Shout out to the Lions. We're from Ohio and people always joke, like the only place worse than Ohio is like Detroit. Really? <laughs> yeah. Damn. <laughs> like even Cleveland's like, well, at least we're not Detroit. <laughs> He's a very popular cigarette with the children. You know what this is in here? You know what this is? It's a federal tax stamp. So why don't you keep me going to business yourself? But y'all supposed to got all the connections, you know? Well, tell me something, shit, I'm a businessman. I'm there you go. That's what I'm talking Are about. We, I'm assuming we're undercover right now. It seems like it. The deal's for 5000 That's about 2000 that you, know you count yourself. You know, and on the next score, I promise I'm going to get up to you. Don't jerk me off, all right, man? Oh, I see a cop, cop in, yeah, the in the background. <laughs> $5,000. Read my lips. $5,000. Nice doing business with you, kid. Hey, buddy. What you doing here? The truck, it just stopped, man. You got some jumper cables, you give me a jump. Yeah, uh, don't I know you from someplace? Nah, man, that ain't me. I'm from Buffalo. Both of you guys break out some ID. If he knows him, it's probably because he's a cop, right? Yeah, because my blow is covered. Yeah. <laughs> oh my oh gosh. Oh no. Oh my gosh. It makes so me stressful. nervous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, Jackie Chan. Hang in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, get out of the way. Those poor watermelons. So much destruction. Oh my God. I don't think things are going according to plan. <laughs> nice. We got a runner. Holy, we should have known it was you. <laughs> Holy. He already, so he has a re reputation, it seems like. I don't have any time for you today, Todd's okay. looking for you. He is really pissed. Oh, no. <laughs> if, you had, if you had busted these guys, maybe he wouldn't have been so mad. $2,000 wasn't enough money if I would have took it those guys and known I was a cop. Get away from me. I'm going to shoot you, all right? A little time for you. Hey, yes. Yes. you got a cigarette? Ooh. <laughs> Did you write that one? I am not That's listening to Jeffrey, but he's still talking. I am not listening to I you. Is that fucking Foley in here? <laughs> oh. Fuck you come off going undercover without authorization from me. You want to hear my side of the story? What's your fucking side of the story? Let's hear your side of the story. <laughs> the mayor called the chief, the chief called the deputy chief, the deputy chief just chewed my ass out. You see, I don't have any bit of it left, don't you? The bus went down last week. That truck is supposed to be in the damn pound. Ooh. I'm trying to tell you. Jeffrey, this is none of your fucking business. <laughs> Stay Jeffrey. out of it, Jeff. <laughs> One more time, you out on the street. Do you understand me? He's gonna do it again. He's yeah. gonna succeed this time. Hopefully. The chief ain't true it all out. You still got a little ass there. <laughs> Ooh. Man. The music so far. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing oh, is gone right. what a right. piece of junk. Yeah. Oh, this is great. So be ready. Yep. Just in case. Hey! Who are you? <laughs> How you doing? All right. I see you're still breaking in people's houses. I can't afford no electrical bill, though. Close my refrigerator. You got roaches and shit and all this. <laughs> Yo, man, where'd you get out? I got out six months ago. I went out to California to get some sun. 10,000 Deutschmarks. Deutschmark? What is it? The bearer bonds. The bonds. You stole them? No. Mm. Does he know he's a cop? Where are you working? Beverly Hills. Ah! <laughs> what are you doing? I was a security guard. 
<laughs> Jenny Summers. Jenny Summers? I haven't seen Jenny in years. What's she up to? Benton Art Gallery out in Beverly Hills. Uh, it's like a world famous place. On a pocket, two cushion. Fifty bucks, you don't make that shot. Man, I wanna be good at pool. I'm not very good at it though. Someday. Oh my goodness. Ooh. <laughs> I feel like this guy is gonna get him in trouble. I got a great idea. I don't know about that. Let's steal a car. I'm a fucking police officer. I can't steal cars no more. How come you didn't tell on me when you got caught, man? How come you tell me we're together? You don't know? Because I love you, man. Here we go. My... <laughs> What the hell? Where have you been? Oh, Zach. Oh, is he working for bad people? I swear to Christ, Zach, I was gonna bring him back. Huh? This man is scary. I took a couple of them. I didn't think anybody was gonna miss him. I swear, if you ever show your face out there I think Mikey's done. Oh. Just like that. I heard a rumor that you're gonna use Rand on this case, and between the two of us, a guy doesn't know the time of day. Anyway, it's a homicide case, and it belongs to Rand. Give it to Axel. It's personal. Hey, look, we're talking about a friend of mine here. Yes, we are, aren't we? One, a hootlum friend. Two, a professional hit. Three, in a cop's apartment. Well, how do you know it was a professional hit? Whoever killed your friend wasn't worried about your little narrow ass. Stay out of this. Well, look, I got some vacation time coming to me. I want to take my vacation now. Stay away from this case, actually. Feel I need a little vacation, that's all. To Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> but if you decide to butt into this case, it'd be the longest vacation you ever heard of. I'm sure we'll just do it, just a little digging, right? Yeah, Nothing too just crazy. We won't get sucked into anything. We're just going to the beach. Yeah. You know, take it in the sights. Wow. Are you telling me he drove his car <laughs> all the way from Chicago to Beverly Hills? Detroit. Or yeah. Detroit, sorry. I was just saying, yeah, that piece of junk. <laughs> A whole different life. Yep. <laughs> Checking in today, sir? That depends. This hotel real expensive? Not from Beverly Hills. May I suggest next time that you call for a reservation? Uh-oh. Yes, you have a reservation for <laughs> Axel Foley. Check Rolling Stone Magazine's Axel Foley. No, no Rolling Stone, no Axel Foley. I'm sorry. Don't you think I realize what's going on here, miss? I'm not some hotshot from out of town. I'm a small reporter from Rolling Stone Magazine that's in town to do an exclusive interview with Michael Jackson. I was going to call the article, Michael Jackson is sitting on top of the world. It seems that we do have a, a last minute cancellation. Thank you. I'm sorry I got upset. It's probably from jet lag or something. Uh, that'll be $235 a night, sir. <laughs> uh, can he afford this? Oh, he's good though. Yeah. If Michael called, tell him, tell him what room I'm in. <laughs> of course, sir. Of course. Man, that two thirty-five back then. Right. I can't imagine now. Now that get, today that gives you like a Motel Six. Oh, is this the art gallery? Yes, he's following that lead, right, Jenny? <laughs> Weird. I'm Finn. My name is Sales, and how can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for Miss Jenny Summers. My name is Axel Foley. And uh, what it's pertaining? Pining, what it's meaning regarding? I'm an old acquaintance of her. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Foley is here to no, see Axel Foley. Don't need this. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, just... that's a really unbuttoned. <laughs> not sexy. It's anyway. No, it's not sexy at all. <laughs> Espresso. I'll make it myself right back there with a the little lemon twist. It's good. I see you look at this piece. Yeah, I was wondering how much something like this went for. $130,000. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> no, I cannot, it's serious. <laughs> because I looked yesterday to a collector. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Somebody else has said it. Foley, what on earth are you doing here? How you doing? Oh, God, it's good to see you. <laughs> Mustache. Peach fuzz. Nah, that's man style. Well, we got some bad news, unfortunately. Well, yeah. I want to talk to you about Mikey. Is he in trouble again? He's dead came to Detroit and somebody killed him. Mikey mentioned that you helped him get a job. The guy who owns this gallery hired him. It's a favor to me. His name is Victor Maitland. He was working for Victor at the gallery's warehouse. Oh, okay. I have a delivery for Victor Maitland. Oh, I'll take it right upstairs. He has to get these flowers. It's imperative. I'm going to go up myself. Right? Floral delivery is my life. I have to take it up. <laughs> Thank you. He moves fast. We'll let you in here. Questions about Michael Tandino. And what, may I ask, is your interest in Mr. Tandino? He came to see me in Detroit a couple of days ago. Someone killed him. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god. He's so shocked. He worked for you, didn't he? Yes, yes, he did. I'm really sorry to hear this. He has no emotion in his voice no. whatsoever. Exactly what was it Mikey did for you here? I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. 
My name is Foley. But this sounds like something for the authorities in Detroit. All I want to know is what kind of... Gentlemen, would you please show Mr. Foley to the door? Damn. Where'd they come from? I know, they're just waiting there. Well, he certainly ruffled their feathers. Yeah. What? Through the glass? That seems unnecessary. Now they have to get that repaired. Did you see that shit? I can describe all of them. Please move to the side of the car. But... What kind of shit is this, man? Hold up. It's got to touch through a window. Is that arresting me for getting thrown out of a fucking window? They probably work for him. Yeah. Yeah, but tell me, so what's the charge? Possession of a concealed weapon and disturbing the peace. Wow. Disturbing the peace? I got thrown out of a window. What's the fucking charge for getting pushed out of a moving car, huh? Jaywalking? <laughs> you know, this is the cleanest and nicest police car I've ever been in in my life. This thing's nice in my apartment. Well, he's not too concerned yeah. <laughs> at the moment. It's another day in the He job. can talk his way out of things, I bet. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, this is the police station? It looks like. I've never been in a cell that had a phone in it. Can I stay for a while? Because I ordered some pizza. Whoa, wow. high tech. I know. Things aren't so bad here in Beverly Hills. Yeah. It almost makes you want to get caught. Why didn't you identify yourself as a police officer? Because I was minding my own business. We have six witnesses that say you broke in and started tearing up the place, then jumped out the window. Wow. You guys believe wow. that? Do you want to start some static? Hey, don't push me. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> I apologize for striking you. Forget about it. I'm Lieutenant Bogomil of the Beverly Hills Police Department. Do you wish to file charges against Sergeant Taggart? Look, where I'm from, cops don't file charges against other cops. Now, why didn't you inform us when you came to town? I'm on vacation. What business did you have in Victor Maitland's office? I had to go to the bathroom. I was walking by. It looked like a nice, clean place. I just got off the phone with an Inspector Todd in Detroit. <gasps> Todd! Uh -oh. Does that name ring a bell? He tells me you may not be very welcome back there. Inspector Todd gave me a message for you. you Want to hear it? He says if you're out here investigating the Tandino murder, you needn't bother coming back. What are you doing? I'm on vacation. 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 Take Mr. Foley over to the courthouse and let him arrange for bail. Pretty good punch you got there, Daggett. After you. You guys are so sweet. Thanks for bailing me out, Jen. Well, it just so happens that the day that Mikey got killed, he showed up in my apartment with a bag of German bearer bombs. Mm. Now, I think he stole them from whoever had him killed. When I mentioned Mikey's name to Maitland, that's when Maitland went nuts and had me thrown out. Is this your car? I remember you used to drive that. Crappy blue Chevy Nova. Is that the same one he has? What are you so. driving now? Same crappy blue Chevy Nova. <laughs> Why were you bothering Victor? I mean, I don't think he has anything to do with uh, Mikey getting killed. Oh, he certainly does. Yep. Well, I was just poking around. I don't think he did. That. Axel. What are you looking back there for? The cops, they're following us. Axel, how can you afford this? He can't. <laughs> He's charging me the single room rate. How can you afford that? Well, actually, I can't afford it. But you know what they got inside that bathroom? They got little robes with little initials of the hotel on it. I'm going to steal one of them robes. You want one? No, thanks. Hello, room service? I'd like to order something from your late supper menu. But listen, I want you to deliver it to this beige Ford that's parked out on Wilshire. <laughs> nice. One beige shrimp salad sandwich, OK? I'm going to be in town when I find out who killed Mikey. And I'm very seriously considering going down to that warehouse where it worked in. And how are you planning on getting in? Man, this guy is just very casual walking. I know. Good evening, sir. Compliments from Axel Foley. Foley? <laughs> well, all I need is a couple of bananas. What is he up to? Oh my. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right in the middle of the street. Yeah, the worst spot. When you hear glass and shit breaking, don't get scared. It's just me kicking in the window. We're getting thrown out of one. <laughs> <laughs> you find something? Coffee grounds. You know what this stuff is used for? Yeah, some people filter hot water through it and drink it. Yeah, I'm gonna take this home and filter hot water through it and drink it in the morning. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. Trouble. Guy comes in, he sits down a couple of stools away. He's got that. The bonds? Yeah. Axel, what the hell's going on? I'll tell you later, come on. Have you ever driven a Mercedes before? No, but a car is a car. I drive my car every day. I mean, if he can drive. <laughs> His car, he can drive any car. True. How could you not notice a man sticking a banana in your tailpipe? Well, he distracted us, sir. And how'd he do that? Well, he sent us a late supper, sir. See, this waiter comes over. Billy. <laughs> and what did you have, Rosewood? Uh, I think it was a shrimp 
solid sandwich, sir. I want you two to go back to the hotel and wait for Foley to show up. We've got something for you, Billy. An anti-banana yeah, disguise. A joke around the office. Yeah. They hold our foreign shipments here till they clear customs. Well, I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed by his fearlessness. He just does whatever yeah. he thinks of doing and yeah. doesn't even care. How you doing? Can you come in for a second, please? Hi. Do you have a match? There's no smoking in here. Is your supervisor here? Yeah, he's in the office. Can you go get him for me, please? What's the problem? Are you security here? Yeah. Then you're the fucking problem. Go get your supervisor, please. He didn't come back yet. Well, what do we do now? We wait. I'm Inspector Raff at the United States Customs Service. How can a black man, dressed like me, just march into your warehouse, walk into the bonded area, and start poking around without anyone asking me any questions whatsoever? Don't know. Oh, well, thank you. That's, that's the answer I was looking for. What? This guy gave me a match, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I do security checks all over the nation. And with the exception of Cleveland, this place has the worst <laughs> security in the nation. We're going to check the background of each and every crate, starting with this one right here. That's right. And he needs the records of all shipments due into the same destination. Right. You got some kind of warrant for this? You know, you have a very big mouth, <laughs> sir. Are you hiding something from me? How would you like for me to have the IRS come down here and crawl up your fucking ass with a microscope? Because they'll do it. I've seen them do it. It's not a pretty sight. I can have 25 agents down here, and you guys will be out of business permanently if I don't get some cooperation. Don't get upset, Inspector. We'll give you everything you need. Right, guys? You know, I noticed you've been drinking a lot of coffee lately. Well, I think that's why you have a hard time relaxing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, man, if you're still mad about the banana thing, I'm sorry, all right? By the way, thanks for the sandwich. He meant it as a joke. I'm a fellow police officer. I know what it's like to be in a stakeout. When I send that food down to you guys, that was from the heart. Why are we always arguing, man? Yeah. Look, all three of us are cops. We should be working together. Mm. We all had a very rough day today. We all go get something to drink and make up and be friends, huh? I found the perfect place, and you guys will love it. Don't worry. It's nice. <laughs> 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 All right, Billy's into it. Yeah. I have a scotch and soda and the brothers dick. What you want? Two club sodas. You don't have to be embarrassed if your dick gets hard. But your dick is supposed to get hard. Taggart's dick is hard, but he won't let you know because he's the boss. <laughs> Check that out. I found out at Maitland Warehouse. Coffee ground. Yeah. So? You guys don't know nothing about nothing. This guy looks like trouble. Yeah. I like how he's still dancing. Yeah. <laughs> that guy over there in the black coat? Well, it's June. Don't you think it's kind of hot for a long black leather coat? Always oh, got guns under there or what? Yeah. There goes Parton over there. They just came in together. Why don't you go over there and cover that guy for me, all right? You gotta learn to trust each other. Philip! Hey, Philip, give me a kiss, baby! Shake it till the uh oh. If you don't get back, I'm gonna blow your fucking brains out. Yeah. Yeah. Please, move and I'll kill you. Way to go, Rosewood. You're some <laughs> kind of cop, you know that? Sorry for the disturbance, folks. I hope they don't get in trouble for being in a strip club, though. Would you mind explaining to me what you and Rosewood were doing in a strip bar? Only reason that they were at a strip bar is because they were tailing me. The only reason that they came in was because they saw two suspicious looking gentlemen. These men watched them, waited for them to make their move, and then they foiled a crime. They're not just regular cops, they're super cops. And the only thing missing on these guys are the capes. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what really happened? Fully invited us to this bar, and fully observed the two suspects casing the establishment. Before we knew what was going on, he'd already disarmed one of them. Detective Foley deserves all the credit. Oh, wow. Us. The super cop story was working. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's right. I would have been a little mad too. Fuck up perfectly good lie and it's all right. You guys are off the case. Wow. Okay, your turn. Oh Morning, my gentlemen. Gosh. Some coffee and donuts? <laughs> no way he's doing it again. There he is. Morning, officers. What y'all, the second team? We're not gonna fall for a banana in the tailpipe. You're not gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe? <laughs> this is Victor Maitland's house? Yeah, I think so. Y'all want something to drink? Beer or something? I got some stuff in the trunk. You look a lot like you're on a stakeout. Stakeout? No, no. 
I've been shooting the shit long enough. <laughs> Time for me to take in some sights. Excuse me. This <laughs> car. Can they at least give it like a car wash or something? I know. How much you gonna pull? Oh, wait until the. <laughs> yeah. Nice. He is having the time of his life. I know. Can you put this in a good spot? All this shit happened last time I parked here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk to Victor. It's very, very important. Victor Maitland, the gray-haired gentleman, very dark skin, Capricorn. Victor. <laughs> well, why don't you give me the message and I'll take it to him? Tell him that um, Ramon went to the clinic today and I found out that I have Herpes Simplex 10. And I think Victor should go check himself out with his physician to make sure everything is fine before things start falling off on the man. Oh, <laughs> Actually, you yeah. Hi, Victor. I'm back. <laughs> Why don't you get the hell out of here, cuz? Oh! Last time we met, I didn't get a chance to talk to you. And I have a pretty good idea that you had Mikey killed. And when I find out for sure, I'm gonna fuck you up real bad. You haven't the slightest fucking idea who you're dealing with. Crawl back to your little stone in Detroit. Please step away from the table, sir. Gotta go now, Vic. Catch you later, Vic. Ooh. He's not scared. Nope. Don't I know you guys from someplace? <laughs> you look so familiar. Why are you bothering Victor Maitland? I had a friend named Michael Tandino that used to work for Victor Maitland. And Maitland had him killed. I can't prove that right now, but when I do, you'll be the first to know. I went to his warehouse, and I saw some guys unloading a crate that was filled with German bearer bonds. Just because Maitland chooses to invest in the same kind of bonds your friend had, doesn't necessarily mean he's a killer. The crate that I saw didn't even pass through customs. They take the drugs or the bonds out of the crates, and they send it back before customs even knows. But I found coffee grounds all over the warehouse. What does that mean? Drugs are sometimes packed in coffee grounds. The scent throws off the dogs. We don't have enough to get a search warrant. Mm. Come on, guys, I know how we can get around. We don't get around search warrants in Beverly Hills. Is this the map? No. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Who disabled a non marked unit with a banana? I just bet you are the pride of your department in Detroit. Is this the man who wrecked the buffet at the Harrow Club? This Take Detective Foley back to his hotel room and escort him to the city limits. The two charges of disturbing the peace have been dropped against you. The chief says if you return to the city of Beverly Hills, the charges will be reinstated. Well, he seems to have enough to, to follow You up. want to tell that to the chief? Oh, no, Jenny. Jenny, there's a gentleman in town from Detroit uh -oh. who says he's a friend of Michael. I believe his name is Foley. Grew up in the same neighborhood. Oh, really? Have you seen him lately? He told me that uh, Mikey had been killed. He left and... Uh, I haven't uh, seen him since. Wouldn't by any chance know where Foley is staying, would you? No, I, I have no idea. Look, I read the manifest, all right? They're expecting another shipment in today. Bogan Never Mill mind Bogan Mill. This is a chance for me and you to blow this case wide open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy. I'm not going to drive you to the art gallery, Axel. I think you can be persuaded otherwise, Billy. <laughs> we can be there when the shipment comes in and nail it. I got a hunch, OK? That's a technique by which many crimes outside of Beverly Hills get solved. All they asked me to do was drive you out of town. Now I'm gonna screw that up too. <laughs> Billy, I love you. How you doing? This is my good buddy, uh, Billy Rosewood. This is Jenny Summers. Yo, Serge, can you get my friend an um, espresso? You want to get a lemon twist? Yeah, sure, if it's no bother. Well, Victor Maitland was here asking questions about you today. Yeah, well, look, the reason I came down here is because I want to get back inside the warehouse. How about I go with you? If this has anything to do with Mikey getting killed, then I want to go check it out for myself. You can't go in because you're a cop in this town. You go in there without probable cause, they're going to call in an illegal search. And just be cool, all right? If anything jumps off, I'll come and knock at you, all right? I promise. OK? Sorry, Billy. Yeah. Are they anticipating anything like this? Right. Bingo. I got it. Same sugar. We'll get Rosewood. Welcome to the party. Come on, Billy! Rosewood. You've got to say that. Oh. Seems we have guests. I just can't tell you how disappointed I am to find you here. Take her to the car and wait for me. Don't worry about me. We got cocaine and coffee here. We're going to get wide and have a big party. Come on, Billy. Do something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good enough. If something happens to her, I'm all ears. I'll kill you. 
Well, cuz. Are you still pissed at me? No. But I should have taken care of you in Detroit when I popped your little buddy. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Foley. <laughs> Just the same look on his face. <laughs> Get in there. Let's go. Oh, Look at no. that tiny little Oh, uh, yeah, the little pea shooter. Freeze! She got him. Thanks, man. Check out the warehouse's that address and act on whatever he finds out. Billy, what the hell is going on? Check out the warehouse and please don't say anything to Bogle Mill. Right now his car is heading north on Palm Canyon Road. Foley was up there looking over Maitland's house. Yeah. Do you have the address of that warehouse? Yes, sir. You two check that place out. Then find me and let me know what the hell is going on over there. <laughs> That's funny. They're just like right there out in the open. Yeah. What the hell are you doing here? I stole my gun and forced him to bring me here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he said about Maitland is right. Now he's kidnapped a woman and he's got her in this house. Well, let's go in there and get her. The fuck do you think I'm trying to do here? <laughs> You're not doing anything. We'll handle this. Man, I'm going to open up this door and I'm going inside. You want to stop me? Shoot me. Me too. It's my last warning, Foley. I'm sorry, Sarge. I've got to. Yeah, okay. let's go. What is that? Better get Maitland up here. <laughs> Everyone's gone. Have you seen Tiger? He took off about 10 minutes ago. Foley's on the grounds. I'll get some people out there right away. Try to locate Taggart and Rosewood. Oh, yeah. How are they going to get up there? Oh, great. Okay. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Got effort. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is not self. What's a 20? 609 Palm Canyon Road. A Victor Maitland, sir. Okay. Yeah. Now get, the, get Billy up there. <laughs> Bro. That was a close call. You all right? <laughs> Let's go, Billy. Drop it! Wow. Ooh, here's a good shot. Yeah. Cover me. Ooh. <laughs> Nice. Go around front, I'm gonna check the back. We have a report of shots fired at that same location, 609 Palm Canyon Road. Police! You're all under arrest! That's not gonna work. <laughs> you do that again, I'll shoot you myself. Thinking about near the end of Butch Cassidy. Oh no, this is a spoiler for a future movie reaction. This. Ah! <laughs> oh <laughs> no, I'm spoiler. gonna cut it out. <laughs> Bullseye. Hmm. Oh no, Maitland. Damn. Of course, he's there lurking in the shadows. Oh, that's oh. awkward. Oh my god. Jeez, the wave. Right Axel! No! Of course. Freeze! Mm. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> the guy was a bad shot, Maitland. <laughs> Dramatic roll, <laughs> love it. Police! You're all under arrest! Very good. <laughs> Great. Well, I guess that's a wrap. Yeah, looks like it. I mean, I don't know how they're gonna deal with all the paperwork, but... Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Oh, shit. You have a report that explains all this. Miss Jeanette Summers, the manager of Mr. Maitland's art gallery, accidentally discovered large quantities of a substance she suspected was cocaine in the art gallery's warehouse. She immediately communicated her discovery to Detective Axel Foley. Foley was, at the time, uh, cooperating in a joint investigation of narcotics trafficking. 
Detectives Foley and Rosewood, responding to Miss Summers' report, proceeded to the warehouse, where Rosewood did, in fact, discover approximately 80 kilos of cocaine. Sergeant Taggart here was the first to arrive at the scene. And in the course of defending ourselves, we shot several suspects. Well done. What an elaborate lie. <laughs> Sergeant Taggart. Happened just like the lieutenant said, Chief. <laughs> I suppose congratulations on order. You were lying your ass <laughs> Why don't you go to the hospital and get your shoulder looked at? I was wondering if you could, like, do me a favor, sir. It's just that I was hoping that you could, like, call in my inspector, Todd, my boss back home and straighten things mm. out for me. But that's all right. I guess I'm just out of a job. It's cool, though. A transfer? I think I'm going to stay in Beverly Hills. I like it out here. I will talk to Inspector Todd first thing tomorrow. You got a sweet 1035? Oh, gosh. What's the bill? Moment, sir, I'll get your bill. Bogomil ordered us to make sure you got out of town. <laughs> you know what matters? That you guys came down here. I'm all choked up on the inside. Beverly Hills Police Department is picking that up. Oh, get out of here. Sure, you guys are too nice. Sir, do you sell those Beverly wow. Farm robes down here? Yes, we do, sir. They're $95 a piece. Well, money is no object. <laughs> Put them on my tab. I have to have two of them, though. You saved my life, OK? I don't think I'll ever be able to repay you, but as a token of my appreciation, I want you to have this fine Beverly Palm robe. Nice. Each time you get out of the shower and you're dripping wet for the rest of your life, I want you to think about our friendship. Billy, take care of the tab, will you? <laughs> no. Hey. no, that's all right. You keep it as a souvenir. I already have three of them in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about stopping off and getting something to drink, though. And we sort of figured you would. Aww. Does that mean you guys are going to join me? Well, I don't think one beer's going to kill wow. us, Billy. Where are we going, anyway? Another perfect place. You guys will love it. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> oh, that what a face. Trouble making. Yeah. That is a wrap on Beverly Hills Cop 1. One. There are two other films and one still coming out in yeah. the near future, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was good fun. Good, yeah. what is this, 80s? Yes. 80s music fun. <laughs> good vibes, yeah. Good comedy. Eddie Murphy, another strong performance. He's just like, he's very confident, self-assured. Like, yeah. you're very convinced he is who he is. Yeah, and no matter what, like, what situation is thrown his way, like, he always, like, is determined to get out of it. Yeah. You know, and he's very quick on his feet. He always knows what to do. Yeah. And how to get out of situations, so. Even if it gets him into trouble sometimes, it always works out. I liked how we had a little bit of an enemies to friends situation. Yeah. I mean, we had these two cops who were kind of like, they weren't bad, but they were a bit, you know. Kind of stuck, you know, by the book, rigid. Yeah. Didn't f think too kindly of um, Foley at first, but the way they got to know each other, despite the whole banana peel incident, you know, they were able to bounce back and. and uh, yeah, even the lieutenant as well. The lieutenant. They, yeah. uh, they kind of saw the, the value, I guess, of his way in the end. Right. <laughs> a little bit. Villain, pretty classic. Classic. Not too exciting, but like no. he was just, he was there doing bad guy things. Yeah, they're all bad shots, you know. <laughs> right. For the sake of the movie, right? He has his evil monologues and his kidnapping. Yeah, and... yeah all the shenanigans. Right. It, de it definitely reminded me, and especially in the beginning, it kind of gave me a... Uh, Rush Hour vibes with, um, what's his, what's his character? Um, Jackie Chan and uh, Chris Tucker? Yeah, Carter? Cr Chris Tucker's character. Just how he's like, he's not a bad cop, but he does things that are kind of not how you're supposed to right, do Right, a little reckless, <laughs> right. sometimes spontaneous, in the moment. Yeah. I'm going to have that theme song stuck in my head for the rest of the day. And probably. Yeah, the music, again, it was really a vibe. Probably the rest of my life, so. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just one of those movies that are just, they're good fun. Feel good. Yeah. You know. It took my mind off the the loss, the loss of the Cowboys right, from right. yesterday, so I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, Axel Foley is a pretty solid name. It's Axel, a good, very powerful name. Axel, I like that. Yeah, name. Axel Foley it really sounds like a detective. Yeah, someone that's gonna get to the bottom of everything. Yeah. I won't stop until they're done. Thank you so much for joining us for Beverly Hills Cop, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.